Hello and greeting everyone. My name is Hezron Maraun and my metric number is 2020-843-904 and I'm from group Bio 1502 group 1 and now I'm going to talk about my topic which is a Chichago cyanide murder, a case study in cellular respiration. So happy watching! So what is cyanide? Cyanide is a chemical typically referred to as poison that acts quickly and it can exist as a gas, hydrogen cyanide, a salt, potassium cyanide. Cyanide can be found naturally in some food such as lima beans and almonds as well as in commercial sources. So what is cyanide poisoning? Cyanide poisoning is mostly due to the termination of aerobic cell metabolism. Cyanide binds to the ferric ion in cytochrome oxidase 3 inside the mitochondria in a reversible manner. The powerhouse or energy factories of a cell as they are responsible for making adenosine triphosphate, which is the cell's main energy carrying molecule. By preventing the conversion of oxygen to water, this essentially stops cellular respiration. A series of metabolic process which is very important to synthesize biochemical energy. The Chicago cyanide murders was a tragic event that happened on September 29, 1982, where it started with a sore throat and a runny nose. It was then that Mary Killerman, a 12 year old girl, told her mother and father about her symptoms. They gave her one extra strength Tylenol capsule that unbeknownst to them, was laced with the highly poisonous potassium cyanide. Later at 7 a.m. the next morning, her daughter was found collapsed on the bedroom floor and later pronounced dead. A total of seven people died in the original poisoning, with several more deaths in subsequent copycat crime. In discussion, the first question that asked is, what is the relationship between the electron transport chains and oxygen? But before that, have you ever wondered why oxygen is very important to us? It turns out it's so that our cell can utilize it during oxidative phosphorylation, which is the final stage of cellular respiration. The electron transport chains and chemiosmosis are two interconnected components of oxidative phosphorylation. Electrons are transported from one molecule to the next in the electron transport chain, and the energy released during this electron transfer is utilized to create an electrochemical gradient. The energy stored in the gradient is utilized to generate ATP and chemiosmosis. So how does the oxygen fit into all of this? First, water is formed when oxygen is an electron and pick up proton at the end of the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain will keep operating if there isn't enough oxygen to absorb electron. For example, because a person isn't breathing in enough oxygen, an ATP will no longer be generated through chemiosmosis and then cell can carry out the processes they require to operate if they don't have enough ATP and they may perish after a lengthy length of time. So the second question is, cyanide is an extremely fast acting poison. In fact, it was developed as a suicide pill called L-pill during World War II so that British and American spies could avoid being captured alive. Mm -hmm. Given what you know about ATP and cellular respiration, explain why cyanide is so fast acting. Cyanide is able to kill so fast because the molecules are exceptionally small and can dispense throughout the entire body very quickly, which is affecting all major organs and tissue in short amount of time. There is important information that we need to remember here, which is cyanide loves to bind in to ferric iron in the cytochrome oxidase. When cyanide is ingested, it is swiftly transported throughout the body via the circulation. Cyanide is harmful because it binds to the ferric iron in cytochrome oxidase, which is preventing the cell from using oxygen. And then anaerobic metabolism occurs when the cytochrome oxidase system is blocked. 
which is resulting in loveless production and serving metabolic acidosis. Other enzymes are inhibited by cyanide and it can interact with some metabolic intermediate. So here is the flow chart on cyanide poisoning. First, the cyanide will bind to cytochrome oxidus, then it will inhibit the complex 4, and then oxygen cannot accept the electron, which lead to mitochondria cannot utilize oxygen, and then there is no ATP formation. And this situation will lead to anaerobic glycolysis, and then going to lactic acidosis, and then it leads to HAGMA, which is high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So the third question is, given what you know about cyanide poisoning, do you think that giving a person oxygen will be an effective treatment why or why not? The answer it is not. Giving a person oxygen will be not an effective treatment. From the autopsy report, we know that the victim have massive cell death that showed by the tissue sample from the heart, lungs, and liver. Cells die as a result of widespread mitochondrial damage because they can no longer create adequate energy. This is because Mitochondria in our body are defect leads to no ATP production. For instance, the victim died of hypoxia, but their level of oxygen is high in the blood. In conclusion, cyanide is very lethal to cell respiration because it can kill an affected person in the blink of an eye if they do not seek treatment immediately. This is due to the fact that cyanide can inhibit our bodies from generating energy. If you or someone you know has swallowed, breathed, or been exposed to cyanide and show signs or symptoms including weakness, dizziness, difficulty breathing, disorientation, or seizure, call an ambulance, your local emergency response system, or a poison control center right away. This is because the poisoning caused by cyanide cannot be treated at home. It is absolutely necessary to seek medical help right away. And here is some of my references. And that's all from me. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. Stay safe and stay home.